welcome here to Nauru, guys. Um, we just got a couple of drums of fuel here, about 400 liters, not about, 400 liters of fuel we're dropping off here, restarting back up, and jumping on over about 10 minutes over to Yembi Yembi. So let's go ahead and get this unloaded and then get out of here. So we've got these pieces of wood here just so that they're not damaging the frame rails basically um, or the seat track rails in here. I'm just going to retie this down. This is already strapped down. We do do two per each one. So and then we've got to have we've got 400 kgs here so we've got to have at least eight connection points. So I've got one, two, we have three, four. I've got to basically do four in the back here to be legal. All right, we're all loaded up. Uh, I'm just going to get the tail stand now. The river as I was coming in was super shallow. So that means that they haven't really had any flooding here, which is really good. So it means that it probably should be a little bit firmer. I've got a little bit of a headwind this way. So I'm going to turn around, head down to the end where I've got stuck before, and then we'll be on our way out of here. And that's all. This particular runway um, is very, very soft on the sides. I mean, this time of year, it's not, I was just asking them how much rain have you guys been getting? They said, well, we weren't really getting that much rain. So it's good, it's cut short, which is great. I'm gonna taxi on down to the other end, take off into the wind. There was about three to five knots of headwind um, on landing. TAS system test, okay. I've got about 300 kgs of cargo on board, 930 pounds, so four, uh, basically 500 is what I put into my cargo here, for 60, 100 pounds basically, rotate at 57, 58, and 67 if we have to come back in, which we will in 10 minutes over in Yembe Yembe. Moresby 1267, November Tango, Zulu Taxi. This is where I got stuck a few months ago. It's pretty firm out here though. Moresby 6538, November Tango, Zulu Taxi. November Tango, Zulu Taxi, Nadu, Yumbi Yumbi, 1 POB. Taxi in Aru, Yambi Yambi, one POB. A departure point in Aru, destination Yambi Yambi. No, Bember Tango Zulu. Caps and selectors are good. Controls, we'll turn Betty off for takeoff so she's not screaming at us. Get our radar going on warm up, which is an instrument. We've got 57, 67, below 5,000. It's only 10 minutes over there, so it's really not, it's 17 nautical miles, so it's really, really close. Probably my shortest flight ever here in Papua New Guinea. Get our trim set up. If we are not 50 or 40 knots by the first group of people on the left, we'll abort on the runway. Full reverse, heavy braking. Cut off, pull off, and shut off. Or cut off, pull off, and shut off. If we're going off into the trees and brush ahead, we'll just go straight ahead after takeoff. We'll pitch for 85 knots. Consider EPL, consider feather. Left hand down to the river because it's pretty shallow today. 
84 flaps, emergencies, masters, and crack my door. Nation inlet and lights, harnesses, and high idle. 33 at sea level, so 1470 for 1520. Ignition, condition, flaps, 20 fuel, and harnesses. Let's go. 1470, and rotate at 57. That nose up. There's 30, 40, 47, there's 50. There's 54, there's 57, and we are airborne by 75% of the runway. Because it's only 17 miles, we'll just stay at like 1,000 feet. There's no point going any higher than that. We'll just pitch on over, over 85 will go zero degrees. And feeling with density altitude today, that's for sure. With kind of just muggy grass that just kind of feels like thick carpet. And as much weight as we do have in here on a short runway like that, yeah, we used up 75% of the runway just to get our wheels off. There's 800. Let's go ahead and bring our power on back before we zoom on through 1,000 feet. Morsby 6538, November Tango Zulu, departure. Let's get our trim set up now and also bring our power on back so our fuel flow is just at 320 for this short little flight. Morsby 6538, November Tango Zulu, departure. November Tango Zulu, must go ahead. November Tango Zulu, departed Inaru, time 53, tracking 052, below 5000. Estimating Yembi Yembi 03. Tango Zulu, go ahead. Level in Eric and below 5,000. November Tango Zulu. Tango Zulu, Secondary Yembi Yembi, call on 8 Zulu. So our direct track is to go right through that big mountain right there, a big mountain, like a thousand foot mountain right there in front of us. So we'll just head off to the left a little bit. You can bring up my strip chart for Yimby Yimby. I was just out here this morning. Oh, I know that it's good. Good day, go ahead. All right, elevation's 80 feet. We'll be landing probably on runway zero, uh, actually, yeah, zero seven. Yeah, we'll be landing at zero seven potentially because the winds were coming from that uh, fear, but they could be drastically different just with the hills. The winds kind of swirl a different way. So we'll see when we get over there. It's just another five minutes over there. If you guys want to try this exact same little jump short, short jump, not jump short, from here over to uh, Yembi Yembi on your flight sim, um, I'll leave the details down below to my Patreon page where I have a, like 50 of these little flights you guys can uh, redo on your own home sim and experience PNG for yourself. It's really cool. There's a lot of them that are already on there, a lot of them that are not that I actually have downloadable for you guys available as well. Oh, I love flying low. I mean, I'm only a thousand feet, but it is really beautiful to be able to see so much more. All these trees below us right here are like kind of the palmy looking ones. They're sago trees, and this is where they get a lot of their food that they eat out here in the seeping. So basically, they cut them down, they split them open. I know that they even have like pigs come in and like chew them all up, basically. And they get the insides of the bark. And I may be wrong in the exact, exact details, but get the inside of the bark and basically get it to where they just keep feeding it. It's like this nasty mush, basically. And they keep running water through it. And it becomes basically a paste um, that they make into, that they can make into like little like pancake kind of looking like things. And um, this other like kind of, I don't know how to put it, like a jello almost. It's kind of like a, yeah, just like a gooey 
Jello that they also make. Um, I haven't tried that one. I heard that's gross. Um, I guess if you grow up on it, it's not gross because it's just normal. But when you have never had it and just the texture of it, eh, okay. So, um, and then they also do it kind of like this wet, um, kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. It smells like throw up in this one form. They put it in these, these woven baskets, basically, and then they'll fly them out to different places. But it sometimes drips out and it stinks. It, it honestly, I'm not even making this up. It smells like throw up. So those always go under the plane, away from all other cargo so that nothing can like mix with the cargo. They're that bad. Anyways, that's where they get most of their food here, besides fish, obviously, from the rivers here in the Seabic Plains. Morsby at 819 November Tango Zulu. In the circuit, Yembe Yembe, cancel SAR. November Tango Zulu, Yembe Yembe, SAR, terminated. November Tango Zulu. All station, Yembe Yembe, 126.7 November Tango Zulu's in the circuit, Yembe Yembe. The airstrip's just directly ahead of me. I'm just gonna fly basically to the end of it and then cut out at a 45 so they can hear that I'm here. We'll flip the landing, it's already on, engine landing bypass. Our selectors are good, our TAWS is already turned off, our VREP is the exact same, lights and are done. Power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73 and reset ITT. 10 degrees of flaps, prop and harness is done, and landing clearance or our SAR is complete. Winds are actually coming out of the other way now, so we'll actually go around to land on runway 25. Don't see anybody on there. It was all gloomy this morning when I came out here, and now it's nice and bright and sunny. At 10 degrees of flaps, we'll go 67, 77, and 87. So downward, we'll start slowing down to 87, and I'm almost at my numbers now, so we'll go 20 degrees of flaps. Bring our torque on down to 300, just so I can get going down. OBS to runway 250 and 07. It's 80 feet, so we'll turn final at 600 or probably a little bit less because we'll probably come in a little bit more because there's a hill right there. So it'll probably be between 500 and 600. And base, we've already got 20 degrees of flaps. and slow into 77 knots. 500. There's our 600 MSL right now. And I still look a little bit high for where yeah, I am. Yeah, that's awesome, we'll see, go ahead. That's looking better here, we're at 540. Full flaps checklist is complete. Turning final and slowing to 67. It's zero for alpha, not above. I'm zero zero eight. HF primary eight eight one nine on secondary six five three eight. We got five knots of headwind. Went up on continuing. We can just go around the last second if we needed to here. Picking up some guys here that I dropped off this morning that were working on the lawnmower. I have the parts for the lawnmower, so I think, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully we won't be here for the next two hours trying to work on this thing. Anyways, um, I'll walk you around here while I'm on the ground, just kind of what we're doing here. And then if you're interested in seeing a full-on walk around this area, I have on my Patreon page as well for that. Uh, last time I was out here, I made a longer video and showed the school here and stuff. So, anyways, let's go ahead and shut down and take a look around. Looks like all the kids are getting behind the plane now.
All right, well, while they're grinding um, the blades real quick, uh, then they'll throw the three belts back on. I don't know if they were, what exactly how they were damaged or what, but anyways, hopefully within the next hour we can get out of here, head back to Grok another hour and 10 minutes back up that way. Um, and yeah, be back by hopefully around two, something like that. Safety first, right? <laughs> good, yeah, good one. Here's the shed where they keep all their fuel in here. They've got a big tractor, but the PTO on it is all messed up, screwed up, doesn't work very good. And this, they, even their pull string start on this is all screwed up as well, but they figured out how to just wrap it around it and start it up each time that way. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just check on the status of how they're coming with the lawnmower. Let's see if they're getting the belts on. It looks like they're starting to get the belts on. But it's just about every kid here is a little boy. I think I saw maybe one girl out there, but everybody else, but everybody else is a little boy. Clearly only the, the boys are interested in the airplane and the mechanic stuff, but that's pretty typical. Well, let me walk on down to the river for you guys. There are crocodiles in this river. Last time I was out here, I asked them, does anybody ever get bit, any kids, anything like that? And they said, nope, never. So apparently the crocs are getting enough food from other things. They do say every once in a while a dog or a chicken or something like that will go missing, but nobody's ever got eaten or things like that. So that's good. Wow, the water is so low. To think that it's probably at least 10 feet lower than me right now, and this thing floods the airstrip, and obviously floods their village as well. So the water rises up a lot and pretty quick. Give you guys a quick reference on how thick the jungle is around here. Yeah, this is like 10 feet off the runway. Super thick. I remember hearing a story about this U.S. Marine that came out here and he wanted to make the hike over to Madiyama, which is like a seven minute flight, super short. And I don't know how many days it took him, but he said it was the worst decision of his life. <laughs> it was miserable. And this is why. Mosquito infested, just swampy everywhere you go. Man, this is a rough life. A success. I'm glad they were able to get it fixed. I thought it was a pulley that was bad, but that's at a Yifki, not here. It was the pull string that's bad, but I'm glad that they got the new belts on and they'll have a working mower because their tractor doesn't work. So, man, if it's not one place, it's the next that has a problem with their mower. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy this. Uh, out here at Yembi Yembi, like I said, hour and 15 minutes back to Garoka. Looks like it should be a fairly nice afternoon on the way back. So, see you guys next time.